Hey, welcome back. I would say that he is my favorite senator, but they may go to his head. So he's one of my favorite senators. Senator James Inhoff of uh, Oklahoma is on the line with us. Senator, how are you? Oh, I'm fine. I'm, re- I'm recovering. Okay. Oh, <laughs> Getting quite a, the chewing uh, after all this earmarks thing, huh? Well, you know what? In a way, what's happening today might be good, Phil, because I, I don't know whether you caught my thing just a few minutes ago. You probably didn't because you have your show. But uh, I outlined that there's a group of people that uh, from eight really neat groups like the uh, – uh, Tom Schatz with the Citizens Against Government Waste and Melody Slow, the, the Citizens for Responsibility and Ethics and so forth. And so we had eight of them who put together the five principles of earmark reform. And what I did, I had done this before Mitch McConnell made his statement, and that is we drafted a Senate bill, S-3939, which meets each one of the five uh, reforms that they want and additionally does something that right now might really be good, and that is it, it demands the same um, uh, uh, treatment of, of uh, uh, bureaucratic or Obama earmarks as it does congressional earmarks. And I, I think once before on your program, when Sean Hannity came out with his 102 most egregious earmarks, the interesting thing about that was that they were all uh, presidential earmarks. Not one was a congressional earmark. So what we're doing now, and I think with what probably will happen tomorrow, we can get this thing passed, and it's called S-3939. It's going to you know, totally reform the system. The biggest problem I've had is that over the last two years and longer, but the last two years specifically, we've had every single night uh, Senators McCain and Coburn and DeMint on and on and on talking about earmarks, 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 to the, and it's been very distracting. And the same time that happened, we have a president, Obama, who increased the debt by to thirteen point four trillion dollars, and gave my twenty kids and grandkids a three trillion dollar um, deficit. So at least that will stop now, and we can start paying attention. I don't know if he would have been able to get rid, uh, get all of that done if it hadn't been for the fact that we we're zeroing in on one percent of the discretionary spending. Well, well, explain to the folks, though, Senator. We're talking with Senator James in Oklahoma. He says that earmarks aren't always bad, and and, the, and if we get rid of earmarks just totally, then we're going to leave uh, all the earmarks to the White House. What is the difference between a presidential earmark and a congressional earmark? And how how on earth? Is the White House able to insert earmarks into a congressional bill? Okay, it's, it's uh, very, very simple. The president sends a budget to uh, both the House and the Senate. We all know that. Then what we can do with that budget is we take it and we decide we'll stay with the bottom line. In other words, he'll say there's going to be $600 billion for defense spending or a figure. Then he t- says what he wants to do with that. Well, the one example, I used several examples on the floor today. One of them is he wanted to have a $300 million, um, it, it's, it's kind of a launching system that's called, and, and it's a good system, it's something we would like to have, but we looked at it from the Senate Armed Services Committee and said, no, to spend $300 million on that, it'd be nice if we had the, the money to spend, but we would rather spend that and get six new F-18 fighters. And so we took out his $300 million for the launching system and put in ours. Now, that is technically an earmark. And so that means that we cannot do that if we agree that we're not going to do any uh, earmarking. Then, then we have to go along with his choice. And I would, or, I, or, vote, I spent, or vote the whole thing down, right? Hmm? Or vote, or just vote the oh, whole yeah, thing well, down. Oh, yeah, you can't do that. And, right. you know, you can't, you've, got to, you've got to fund. So it gives him all the power of the earmark. Yes, and, and what I did, I spent 30 minutes of my time on the floor today going over in detail what Hamilton and Madison and, and all of them, Justice Sloan, all of them uh, said that it is exclusively the right and, and the constitutional obligation uh, to spend money is all in the legislative branch. Well, I think that uh, it, it, once you look at that, you think, well, wait a minute, we're now going to let him uh, get involved in this. 
And I think that the problem with that is the people, when they wake up to that, they're going to want to have the reform in this S3939, which will solve all the earmark problems. We can quit talking about it, and we can start uh, trying to stop the president from bankrupting him in any further that uh, he's already done in America. So we've always had earmarks, what you're saying. We've always had a, a situation where the where the White House or the, the president sends a budget over to Congress, and then Congress tinkers with that. And so we've always had this this situation. Is that right? Well, we've always had it. In fact, today I've, I've read uh, for quite some time on Senator De- DeMint, who's a real good friend, on all the earmarks that he's had up to including last year. And so it's uh, even though you're saying we're against all earmarks, in reality, uh, he, you know, had – in fact – the, the Citizens Against Government Waste, uh, Phil, they list their, their, uh, the earmarks they think are the worst. The worst is the biggest one, and that was a $2.5 uh, uh, billion dollar earmark that would do away with 10 C-17s. Well, by doing that, uh, and, and, and of course, they were made, not made, but they're, they're actually stationed in South Carolina, and Jim DeMint uh, opposed that. So, you know, he was actually in, on record supporting a, a $2.5 billion earmark, the largest one that was the, the Citizens Against Government Waste had. Well, is so he calling something different an earmark? Is he, is he saying, well, that's not an earmark, something? Or, oh, or, no, no, he's, no, you can't do that because it is an earmark. Okay. And it's, it's listed by all the groups that are watching this as an earmark. My concern has been, oh, with all the talk about earmarks, that is just such a minuscule part of the budget. In fact, I used uh, an example with a chart. I said, what are the, uh, the four worst earmarks or largest earmarks of 2008? And I listed them, but although they would, uh, a lot of people would deny their earmarks, but nonetheless, they're big government spending. One was, the first one was the $700 billion bailout. You know, most of the, almost everyone except me and a couple others went along with that. That's when we gave uh, Hank Paulson $700 billion to do anything he wanted to. Well, you know, they uh, actually the main driver of the earmark reform has been historically has been John McCain, but John McCain was kind of the architect. And the voted for the bailout. Right. And then they, they, in that same year, they had the $300 billion mortgage bailout. They had the $150 billion Pelosi uh, Bush uh, stimulus, and they had the $50 billion PEPFAR. Well, that is 120, I mean, that's $1.2 trillion in earmarks, and they supported that. And yet, you know, and, and that's why it's, it's – and, and we opposed it, but that's how uh, – I, 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 I have a formula that I use in Oklahoma. It's called the Inhofe factor. And I apply this. How much money does this cost each taxpaying family in my city, of, in my uh, state of Oklahoma, uh, when they talk about, how, you know, billions of dollars and all that? Well, in the case of the $1.2 trillion on those, far, those largest uh, bills – that costs my average family who pays and files a tax return in Oklahoma five thousand six hundred and eighty dollars. Just one family. Right now, my total, if you call them earmarks or requests, that most of them were military, came to eighty million dollars. That translates into forty cents. So it's forty cents versus <laughs> five thousand six hundred eighty dollars. Anyway, it's a complicated subject. You have to have the charts and you know to be able to do it. So what? But, so but what again, happened? I'm still, uh, you know, listed as the most conservative member, and yet you have to be realistic and say that uh, we we there are needs that we have in in the various states that will never be met by Barack Obama. Right. So 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 what happened today? I mean, did they decide on these five, four or five points? And if so, can you quickly tell me what that is? Or did we get earmark reform today? Uh, no. No, 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 but we got the introduction of the bill, and I will be glad to tell you the five principles that they and how they're going to be resolved. Uh, these are all the conservative groups agreed, instead of just eliminating earmarks altogether. And anything that's voted on is going to be something that's going to be optional anyway. But uh, they said, to cut the cord between earmarks and campaign contributions, Congress should limit earmarks directing, direct, directed to campaign contributors. Well, my bill, 3939, does that. To eliminate any connection between the legislation and campaign con- contributions, legislative staff should be barred from participating in fundraising activities. We, my legislation does that. The, uh, to increase transparency, uh, Congress should create a new database uh, of congressional earmarks. This is really neat because... Phil, this is a data, you, and my bill does this, and specifically you can see every member in every issue just what that member is proposing and coming to your own conclusions. 
uh, to ensure taxpayer money has been spent appropriately, government account office should be randomly auditing. We set up an audit system. And it goes on and on. But the big thing that we did that is in this bill that those guys forgot about was we should demand the same transparency into Obama bureaucratic earmarks as we do in, our, in uh, congressional earmarks. And remember the 102 most egregious uh, earmarks that Sean Hannity had were all Obama earmarks. Right. So, so it's a complicated thing, but I think it's yeah. going to have a happy ending. The main thing I ought to do is quit talking about this so that we can try to stop him from bankrupting any more than it's already taken place yeah. in this country. Well, great. Look, and, and I guess, uh, is there anywhere where people could see this legislation and find yeah. out what's in it? On my, uh, It's on my website, inhoff.senate.gov. Okay. Right. inhoff.senate.gov. Yeah, it is on there. He just they just posted it. All right, great. And uh, yeah, you don't have to email. You can get it off of that. That's great, Phil. Yeah, I always appreciate the big help you are. Well, thank you very much. We're going to survive this thing. Well, I think so. I think not only survive, we're going to thrive. You got it. You got it. All right, Senator Inhofe. Thank you very much. Thank you, Phil. All right.